Everyone uses MCP within chatbots, but they really struggle with making it available for voice AI. The main reason for that is latency, because whenever you see someone installing an MCP server on their own system, it generally starts a package runner, which means that you spin up an MCP server solely for the purpose of a single interaction. This takes precious time that we don't have when building voice AI solutions. But there's one good thing about it, because it forces us to use MCP in the intended way, hosted. So how do we use an MCP server with a voice AI assistant? And what will this actually do? And how can I actually set it up properly. This is what we're going to cover in today's video, so let's dive right into it. Now, while MCP is literally just a protocol, we now often talk in the context of it being a collection of tools, which is good as it makes it easier to explain. Simply imagine it like this. With an MCP, you have clients and you have server. A server basically has a definition of certain things, so integrations and prompts and other things that it can offer to the Atlantic system. And this also includes tools, meaning that whenever you call an MCP server, you can fetch available tools. And VAPI basically doesn't do anything else. They also have a documentation about it right within here, which you can go through. And by the way, just to clarify, there's two different things inside of VAPI if it comes to MPC. They have an MCC server, which is also being linked here. And that basically allows you to interact with VAPI itself with your account from another Agentic system. So you can use it to create assistance, to do phone calls, to do a lot of different kind of things within your VAPI account. That's not the one we're gonna talk in this video. This one is literally about tool calls, meaning that here we are giving a single assistant inside of VAPI access to an MCP server and all of their tools. And the way they structure it is really, really cool because you can literally just implement an MCP server into your assistant and VAPI automatically with every call fetches all of the available tools so that the Agentic system for this call has all of those tools available and can use them as it deems it relevant. Now, I will show you exactly how to set it up as well. But first of all, let me explain it a bit better so you get a hang of how it actually works and why it is there. And to do that, we are going to look at the most basic example that VAPI offers, which is not using the transient setup that they also define right here. So you have some, some JSON down here. We're gonna make everything visual inside of the dashboard so you actually can see it and follow it along. Now, I'm gonna show you an example at the end of this video as well, where I literally set it up so you can actually see it and understand it including on how you can actually connect a SSE server, so a server-side event-based MCP server. Now, to get into it, we simply head over to our VAPI dashboard, and inside of the, of the dashboard, we head over to the tool section right here, and click on Create Tool, and we select the MCP tool. This is going to be the integration that we use then inside of the assistant that we want to give access to those MCP tools to use it whenever it deems it relevant. Now, we have the tool name in the description, which basically just define a few things about the MCP tool. In this case, to be fair, I haven't even seen it to be super relevant, so I even left it as a standard. I mean, you can see here as well in this tool, I basically just renamed it to Manage Vapi, and I just set up a basic description that I believe would make sense. So it's kind of like a descriptive thing of when you want the AI to use this. The way VAPI sets it up though is that whenever you have a tool and you connect it to an assistant and it is connected to an MCP server, VAPI will call that MCP server, fetch all of the available tools and import them into the Agentic system. Meaning that VAPI has all of those tools directly inside of the system and can use them from there. So it's basically like a sort of transient tool that is being added to your assistant and it's just there for the call. So that is just something as a background explanation which I think is good to understand because it helps you to see that all of the tools will be available, which can be good, which can also be bad, depending on the MCP server that you implement. Now, the probably most important thing about all of it is the server settings right here, because, and that's probably that's gonna annoy a lot of people, you cannot just set up your own MCP server in the way it is often marketed. You need to do it using SSE, so server-side events, meaning that you need to have someone that hosts that MCP server for you, which to be fair is my preferred way because it's the only uh, right way, in my opinion, to get those things done. And this, by the way, is for many reasons, which is not just for security, which is obviously a big concern, but also speed. And the speed makes a massive difference in that case. And with massive, we talk up to maybe like 20, 30 seconds quicker, which just takes you a few seconds then. So it basically shaves off 90% of the time that you would otherwise need to spin up those package runners with UBX or NPX which is really annoying and that's not the way we want to have it in the first place. So having a server-side event, so a MCP server that is actually hosted by the provider that you want to implement is so much better. And there are so many providers that slowly start implementing them and actually hosting them for you so you can implement them via server-side events. And now if you stay until the end of this video, I'll also show you an example on how we can implement a server-side events set up directly in here. So it's going to be very cool and very easy probably less complicated than you might think. Now down here, we can also send along specific HTTP headers in case we need to authenticate ourselves to this server-side events MCP server. And we can also set the messages, which is kind of like the standard that we always have available for mostly all kind of tool calls inside the voice assistant. Cause that basically just defines things on 
a predefined message that we can say before doing the tool call, after the tool call, during the tool call, when it's delayed, etc. So this function is basically what's then being appended inside of the assistant, which then automatically fetches the tools and Vapi then has access to those tools inside of the call, inside of the assistant that is currently having the phone call. Now, before diving into the example, there's one more thing I want to cover, which is what this whole thing actually does. Like, why do you, first of all, need to implement MCP servers? So if you don't know about MCP itself, simply imagine it being a standard or some set of rules that define how we can talk and interact with different integrations. So let's, for example, say we have make.com and they implement an MCP server. We can access certain features on make.com directly from that MCP server without us creating all of those endpoints to make.com by ourselves. It just standardizes the things and makes it a little bit easier to access. So we have less work to do and we also have less compatibility issues and we also need to maintain less things, which is great. And this is by the way, given that make.com is hosting them and you don't just randomly import an MCP server from some random website that you found in the web. So on the other side, that means that your voice assistant now has access to whatever tools are available on make.com and it can use them inside of the agentic system, which is the exact reason why we want to use them because we want to enrich our voice assistant with more tools with more features so that it can do things on our behalf. Now with voice assistant that becomes important in a lot of different ways which might be things of implementing CRM systems which might be implementing calendar systems. We can basically just dynamically give them access to those systems and they can interact with them without us defining the endpoints directly. So it just bridges the gap and makes it so much easier to create integrations for systems that you would otherwise need to implement manually, which is really, really annoying. So the main outcome is to give your voice assistant more features, more capabilities to do things on your behalf without you doing them manually. Now, how does it look with an actual integration in a real world scenario and best possible practices using a server-side event-based MCP server? This is what we're gonna cover now and I'm also gonna show you how that works. And to do that, we're gonna run through a full example from zero to having a fully agentic system that has access to an SSE server. And what we're trying to do now, we basically try to use VAPI with its full potential by also leveraging VAPI's MCP server itself so you actually understand it. And what I want is I want to build a voice assistant that can actually create other assistants directly inside of VAPI. This by itself would now need usually a lot of different integrations. We'd probably need to set up a custom tool call that sends information to a separate backend and then sends that information back to VAPI, basically creates assistant, reports back, shares information. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it. And all we need to do now is literally just set up an MCP tool and we can configure it and make the same thing happen. So to do that, what we're gonna do over here is we're gonna go to assistant, create a new assistant. I start with a blank template, create this assistant. And now we're gonna call this one my by my favorite name here, Lisa. And we simply had uh, just define a first message. This is a static message, you probably know. Hello, how can I help you? So that's basically what the AI is going to say in the first place. And now we're just gonna have a very basic system prompt that says something like, you're an AI concierge that helps the client with their inquiries. You also have access to a set of tools that you can use to create voice assistance. Boom, there we have. I'm just gonna adjust that to assistance, boom. By the way, the tool I just used for transcribing that, it's called Whisperflow. I also have a video about that on my channel, so you definitely wanna check it out. And now given we have this right here, all we're gonna do is we simply click on publish for now, and we're gonna head over to the tool section because now we're gonna configure our, our MCP tool. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'll just name that MCP VAPI Manager. Right? So this is kind of like the, a name that you basically set to understand when the when WAPI wants to use the tool. Now in that case, it is semi-productive or semi-important because we already import the tools dynamically inside of the WAPI assistant, so they're available anyways. So I'm just gonna define a general description here. Interacts with WAPI's MCP server. Boom, WAPI's MCP server, there we go. And now we have the server settings. So which means now we need to have an actual MCP server that we can implement. So there are a lot of platforms that actually provide MCP servers already. I made a video about the one that Appify provides. So Appify itself has an MCP server. Vapi has one as well. And to show you, you can reach Vapi once under mcp.vapi.ai, which looks like this. So if I open that, you can see you have a really nice console. This, by the way, is just visual. An MCP server doesn't need to look like this. It's also don't, don't need to be technical. It's just a cool thing that Vapi built in. But what I would do now is I'd obviously type in help to see what the actual endpoints are available. You can see they have a thing here for endpoints, which by the way, is just a standard as well. So usually when you have an MCP server, all you need to do is add slash SSE at the end, which is then the URL for the actual MCP server. You can see that here as well. And now if I would open this URL, you can see it says missing invalid access token, which means the SSE server itself works, right? So we can access it. We're just not authenticated. Now, that is a good thing on one hand, because now we know that this is the actual endpoint, meaning that 
Going into our dashboard for the server URL, we can use the SSE endpoint here as the actual MCP server URL. Now we can define the secret token here. The thing is, I don't really know how it's defined, if it's a bearer token or how the authentication looks like. So I'm gonna show you an alternative way that is probably a bit more standard from all other platforms that probably implemented as well, because like I say, MCP is a protocol, they try to establish a standard, so things will be standardized at some point, which is also the case for authentication, hopefully. So in our case, what we're gonna do is we add another header to authenticate ourselves to our WAPI account. And when we go over here to the MCP server, you can also go to the docs to read the documentation. But uh, I know, for example, you can see that here as well, they say you need to authent authenticate with a bearer token, which is also very straightforward. What we're gonna do here is we simply head over to the headers here. We click on add header. We're gonna call this authorization. And here we're gonna type in bearer. And now we need to add in the token, which is our VAPI API key. So I'm gonna do that with you. So you see that. And what we're gonna do is we go over to org settings, API keys, and in the API key section, you simply copy your API key. So I just have a random demo key right here that I'm gonna use. I head back over to the tools and in the tool section, I basically just replace the XXX with a token with a space in between bearer. And that's literally all you need to do. From now on, meaning that when I save this and we connect this to the assistant, the assistant has access to all of the tools that VAPI's MCP server offers. Now let's get everything connected. So we have the tool right here. I simply head back over to our Lisa assistant. And in here, I head over to the tool section. In the tools, I select now the MCP VAPI manager, which means now if I publish that, this assistant will have access to all of the tools that are available within the MCP server that VAPI provides. So we're gonna try that by actually creating an assistant live inside of our VAPI account using this assistant that we just created right here. And you'll see how simple that is actually going to be. So all I'm gonna do is I click up here on talk to assistant and just to give you some context upfront so you know what's happening, I'm basically just gonna ask it to create an AI concierge voice assistant called John that, yeah, just, I think that's probably more than enough for the example. <laughs> so let's just head, head right into it. Hello, how can I help you? Hey, I'd like you to create a voice assistant called John that acts as an AI hotel concierge for a hotel called Sunset Beach. Make sure that it answers conversationally and has uh, answers concise and easy to read. This will just take a sec. I've created the voice assistant named John who will act as an AI hotel concierge for Sunset Beach. John will provide conversational, concise, and easy to read responses. If you need further assistance or wish to- Perfect, so it basically did it. At least that's what it said, right? So how do we find out? We find out by just refreshing. So if everything should work out, we should now see an assistant called John that acts as a hotel assistant. So all I'm gonna do is I'll just refresh my page and if everything works, ba -ba, you see we have an assistant called John that has a message based on Sunset Beach and you have a very, very short system prompt. So now you know, we literally just implemented Vapi's MCP server to create an assistant on our account, meaning that this Lisa assistant can now interact with our Vapi account on our behalf doing things. And I did this example just to showcase to you what MCP does and how it actually works with a server-side event-based MCP server, which is the right way to use MCP servers. And this over the next few months is going to be incredibly powerful. So it is something you want to understand and also leverage obviously, whenever possible. But this is a way on how you can use it inside of voice assistants. And as you have seen as well, because it is SSE based, it is quick. The way of when it said, hold on for a second until it actually answered us was really quick. That is because it doesn't need to spin up this whole package runner and start things, validate things, install things, etc. But it just does it within the blink of an eye, which is awesome. So this enables us to go massively, massively into more agentic systems, even with voice AI, building really cool use cases that can do things on our behalf, manage data, exchange information, and even build products. So there is so much happening, which is why I want you to look into it and learn more about it. And by the way, in case you want to learn more about it, we have a community for voice AI enthusiasts like yourself. It is completely free and I'll link it below in the description. So if you want to learn more about voice AI, potentially even make it your next big opportunity for starting something yourself, starting your own agency and making money on the go, you definitely want to check it out. It's super, super worth it. And that's all I have to say for now. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.